Jaden, you said you're a Christian, but you're a seven out of ten, and you'd like to be a ten. Yes. We're going to try to get you to ten really quick. Mm-hmm. Do you think you're a good person? I would say yes. Is your heart pure? Yeah. When did you last look at pornography? It's actually been a while. I would say it's been about a couple of weeks. What do you think God thinks of that? Uh, it's evil. It's lust. It's lustful. Yeah. And Jesus said when you lust in your heart, you commit adultery. Mm-hmm. When did you last use God's name in vain? Probably like two days ago. Do you love your mom? I would say I love my mom. Would you use her name in place of a filth word? No. Because oh, you do respect her. Mm-hmm. You don't respect the God that gave your mother. You have taken his holy name and used it as a cuss word. That's called blasphemy. Very serious in God's eyes. No doubt I'll be lambasted in the comment section by people saying that I'm judging this young man who's a sincere Christian. But here is my conviction based on scripture. If you call yourself a Christian and use God's name in place of the word used to describe human excrement, or you're feasting your heart on pornography without fear of God, you need to examine yourself and see if you're in the faith as the Bible tells you to. Jesus warns straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life and few there be that find it. And then he said broad is the path that leads to destruction and many go in that way. I strive to speak the truth in love. This young man appreciated that fact. If you don't like it, don't watch this channel. Problem solved. How many lies do you think you've told in your life? It's it's numerous. Are you familiar with where Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, and I'll say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Ever heard that Bible verse? It's Matthew 7, 21 to 24. He's saying a lot of people say they're Christians, they love Jesus, but they continue to sin. Mm-hmm. and they're hypocrites, and they're going to be cast out of heaven to hell. So that's a very, very scary place to be in. You've told me you're an adulterer at heart, even as a professing Christian, and a blasphemer, and you're self-righteous and saying you're a good person. When you're not, you're like the rest of us. Jesus said there's none good but God. So if God judges you by those ten commandments on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty. You know, once you break one, you break them all. Yeah. So I would be guilty. It's like hanging from a 10 link chain. Only one has to break and you fall. And the Bible says that. So would you go to heaven or hell if you died tonight? I don't know. You better make sure it's not hell. Yep. Jaden, I'm going to share the gospel with you and it may give things from a different perspective. It may really help you. So you've sinned against God. You're in big trouble on judgment day. You desperately need God's mercy. This is what God did, and you mentioned the cross before. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on that cross. That's why he said, it is finished. If you're in court and you've got speeding fines and you plead guilty, a judge will let you go if someone pays your fine. He'll say, you're out of here, someone paid your fine, even though you're guilty, and it's legal. Well, God can legally take the death sentence off you because Jesus paid the fine on the cross. And then he rose from the dead and defeated death. And now God can legally grant you everlasting life. He can take the death sentence off you, all because of that death and resurrection. And what you have to do, and this is probably what's been missing in your life, is repent and trust in Jesus. Now, the Bible says this, godly sorrow works repentance. Before we've spoken, you thought you were a good person. Do you think you're a good person? I would say yes. Is your heart pure? Yeah. But as we looked at those commandments, you're able to see how serious sin is in God's eyes. That helps you produce sorrow for your sins, which works repentance unto life. Genuine sorrow for sin. The Bible says, a contrite heart God will not despise. At the moment, your salvation is in doubt, and I want you to do what the Bible says and make your calling and election sure. When are you going to repent and trust alone in Jesus rather than in your own goodness? I want to do it as soon as possible. So you're sorry for your sins? Yes. Can I pray with you? Yes, sir. Father, I pray for Jaden that this day you'll help him to understand the serious nature of sin and that yeah. you'd grant him. You forgive me of all my sins and any struggles that I currently have that you help me just break them away, Lord. Break the shackles. And I just thank you, Lord, for you know all the blessings that you've bestowed upon me. And I thank you, Lord, and I pray this in your name, Lord. Amen. Living Waters exists as a non-profit ministry to help you grow in your faith. Here are three things to help you do just that. The Living Waters Podcast, the Evidence Study Bible, everything you've ever wanted to know about the Christian faith, and the Starter Kit, four of our most popular gospel tracks. These and much more are available at livingwaters.com. If you haven't seen that wonderfully encouraging video, he came back 10 years later to apologize, you can watch it right now by clicking on the top video.